Henry got me involved in politics probably 20 years ago. Maybe, maybe longer than that. I don't know. It's been a long time. But we started fighting the, the federal government way back then on what they called the American Heritage River Act. And we defeated that. You know, people just think because it's a federal government, you have to do what they tell you. Well, you don't. You have, you have to stand up and you have to fight for what's right. And even though I have to tell myself that sometimes, we, we fight against unsurmountable odds sometimes, but uh, the good people that I've come in contact with, and these folks here are all good candidates. Every one of them are great candidates. We, they're some of the best candidates we've ever had. We have really turned this country around. But it's guys like Henry Joy that fought in the trenches that are the reason we are where we are today. And I want to thank him for that. <laughs> Just to give you a little, a little history, when I first went to Augusta six years ago, uh, I joined the prayer caucus that, that Henry was leading at that time. And, and we were lucky in Henry Public, we had six people. If we, if we had a dozen people, we felt very uh, blessed that we had that many people. This last election cycle, thanks to all you good folks, and all the good folks in the state of Maine, we had over, over 30 people come to our first Christian caucus. We hope we change it to Tuesday mornings at 8 o'clock. Anybody's welcome. And there are some folks that are near the Augusta area that carry it on all summer. But we have a real good following of Christian people. And, and they're the people who turn this country around. It's, they, you, you, have, you know, people are the ones that are supposed to run the country. And it's, it's thanks to people. There's a lot of good people in this room. I, I don't want to name names because I leave somebody out. But Henry is especially near and dear to me, so uh, I, I felt honored to mention him. But it's Christian folks uh, that uh, in this country that I feel that have turned this country around and made people take back the government. It's your government. It's not mine. I just I just work for you people. And it's, t it's a tough job. Any of these guys, uh, with the jobs they've done, I tell you, we're not making everybody happy. And uh, you read the papers, they don't do us any favors. But it's, you have to make the right decision, and you have to put your trust in God. And I think these guys are all capable of doing that. And every one of them is a great candidate. I'm very proud to be serving in the legislature with them. And with God's blessing, I'll be back another two years, and then I'll join Henry Joy. I'll be retired. <laughs> but thank you all for having me up. This is a great, great place, and uh, I love coming up here. I just live in Lincoln. I mean, I don't live a long way away. It's hard to get up here sometimes. Life's busy. But thank you, Ricky and Debbie, for inviting me. And I'm proud to be here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Did I like the budget? 
No, but it made some of the cuts that we had to make if we're going to make the state survive for a few more years without completely going to pieces. We had a number of folks stand up, so, well, we can't make these cuts. We made some cuts to senior citizens, but it's the ones that's on the verge of losing the benefits anyway. We talked about methadone clinics. I hate those things. They're not, it's nothing but state-funded drug abuse. We got some of the cuts I wanted. I didn't get all I wanted. So being in Augusta, sometimes we have to give a little and fight another battle. So I went for that. But then it comes to our bond issues we've all heard so much about. We just get done voting on a budget and we told people they're going to tighten the belts and make things work one way or the other. Well, now we're going to step up and try to borrow $95 million. We send it to people instead of having them. Uh, i got to put this correct. It's just an order to. That's good. This is what I was going to say the lack of cojones, but that's not. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot afford to borrow $95 million at this time. But I'm going to ask. Somebody, they're going to go without some kind of benefit just so we can borrow the benefit of somebody in southern Maine. They forget this area. And this is why we put this meeting on. I wanted people to get a chance to meet who was actually running the representative of the United States Senate. I wanted to give some other legislators a chance to speak because there are key issues that we are concerned with. Doug Thomas, as many of you know, represents Norman Penobscot. He's got a hat race on his hands. Doug is one of the few people I will ever say that when he got to testify in front of the committee on Billy's passion book, called him a bunch of damn communists by <laughs> my friends. And you know something? He wasn't wrong. Because when you've got a group of people that think that they know better what you should do with your land or your property or even your finances, that is not being a good steward of anything. I know what I want out of my property. I'm not going to go to destroy it because I have to use it. Doug came for us on a bill that's, a, I call it a takings bill. You have a piece of land and somebody comes in and tells you you can't use it for anything because somebody comes downstream wants to look at the aesthetic value of a piece of property. Who owns that ground? Yes, Doug's paying a tax on it, but he can't use it. That's not right. We can talk about our senior citizens. I would never vote to hurt our senior citizens and the budget we put out will take care of the majority of the folks. Because I'm right on that cusp and I'm not looking forward to it. We've had different issues that come up with the east-west highway you've heard about. We've got people here that's against it, people that's for it. I just figure it's good if I decide to put Henry's bill back in, divide the state, it's good for them. <laughs> uh, but outside of that, I'm just grateful you came. And as many of you know, I'm about as conservative as you can find on most issues. Uh, Matter of fact, as we put out our last bonds the other night, the Senate came into the House to watch us. Kevin Ray, which happens to be running, stood behind me and they just looked like and they sat laughing because they knew just how it was going to vote. And I sat next to another gentleman, Bernard Ayotte, who happened to be a representative of Caswell. He said, boy, Henry, be proud that you're changing your name because you don't support anything that's going to tell people what they have to do. You're not making them spend any more money than they can afford to spend. That's what you sent me to Augusta for. That's what all of us down there are trying to do. You're going to read the media how we're kicking people under the bus. Some people are going to die because of the cuts we made. Nobody's going to die because of the cuts we made. A lot of these people you're not hearing from are the people that work every day. They're proud people, and they're not even on the system that could really use it. We have a number of other people out there that have the financial means to sustain themselves, but no, they leave that in their pocket and they expect you, the taxpayers, to pay their way. That is not right. I believe in helping people when they are down, but we shouldn't make life style for them where they can live and just draw off the state and off the taxpayers. I can tell you three different instances of patent along with us, three different families in one household, <coughs> every one of them drawing welfare. They get a uh, fuel assistant. They're selling this fuel for $2 a gallon because they're burning wood, but they qualify under the federal guidelines, so they get it. There are still a lot of issues out here that we've got to fix, but some of these have to be done on the federal level. Because, <coughs> yes, we say what we want to do, but good old Uncle Sam said, oh, you can't do that, or we're going to take and cut some of your money. 
But well, why don't they look into this and make the cuts themselves that have to be done? As they said, a lot of people don't want to make the hard choices. I tell everybody in the gust, I can get down there and make the easy choice for anybody to make them. But when I get to home and look every one of you in the eye and explain my vote, I can stand up and say, I kept my word to you. I voted for no unfunded mandates. I didn't vote for bond issues. And I won't support a budget that's going to hurt the people of Maine. Therefore, I can hold my head up high and if the Democrats say they're going to put me out of office like they said to him, well, let them try. But I think you and the people have the final say with you. That's what Patty tells you to do what. And with that, I'm going to open this up to questions for anybody that's here. And so, we'll start. Somebody speak up, Lou. Earl, go ahead.